I'm Carl Walker, England defender. So Raheem Sterling introduced himself as England's most handsome winger when he did it. So how would you describe yourself? England's quickest player. I was going to ask you about that. Who, surely, you're the oldest player in the team. Yeah. There must be some of the young ones trying to give you a run for your money. Um, I think they're trying, but I think if they're honest with you, uh, they've got a little bit of work to, to do to catch up. Are they not even anywhere near close? I think Marcus is probably the closest. Um, Raz over 50, but I think I've got him over 100. Excellent, love that. Um, I've seen plenty of other players posting videos of basketball. I've heard some games of Uno are going. I don't want to talk about the darts. I lost to Bakayo yesterday. What have you been doing to relax? No, um, we've got a, a good group on the PlayStation on Fortnite. Um, so there's me, Trips, Picks, um, Harry Kane's coming back onto it. So we just try and, you know, have a little bit of fun on that and throw in a bit of banter. Oh, he's got bored of Game of Thrones, has he? Um, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Possibly, there's a lot of time on your hands, so you probably got through it. Yeah, but exactly. Uh, right, I'd, I'd love to know your first memory of England playing in a tournament. When when do you remember as a kid watching them for the first time? Um, I think I've said it before. It was Michael Owen when he went on the amazing uh, against Argentina. Um, I remember he went round my mate's house. So I lived on a council estate back in Sheffield and. We used to have to put pounds in the back of the TV. I think I've told the story. So, yeah, that's my first, you know, real memory of England in, uh, you know, a major tournament. How many pounds do you have to put in the TV? To I think a pound. Know? I think a pound watch. Uh, well, lasted quite a while, but um, it always cool. used to be a panic when he's the pounds ran out, and you'd be scampering. Where's his pounds? And mum, his mum always used to put them in the back of the TV. So we used to you know to grab them from there and shove them back in the. In a meter. Love that. Yeah. Um, who was your England hero growing up? Oh, I'd probably have to say Michael Owen. Um, just believe it or not, I was a centre forward until under 17s. Um, so I kind of looked up to him, you know, I kind of tried to base my game on him. I was small, quick, uh, got him behind him, you know, was good at dribbling. So that's how I tried to do it. But. Um, Fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know how you want to put it, I've ended up at right back. <laughs> well, Gareth likes right back, so I'd yeah. say fortunately, fortunately, to be honest. Um, do you remember your first England call-up, and who was the first person that you called to tell? I do remember my first England call-up, and um, got a call from the lady who used to work at the um, FA called Michelle. And she messaged me, it was a long message saying that I'd been, you know, picked for the, the national team, and where would I want the car picking up? So I, I looked at it and I kind of just, I left it because I didn't think I had no chance. I was at Villa, I was 20 and uh, Fabio Capello was the manager there. So I was thinking, oh, no, it's impossible. So I left it and then it, she replied back saying, this isn't a joke. It's actually, you know, it is uh, Michelle from England. So I replied to him, the car came and picked me up, I think the next day. Love that, excellent. Yeah. Um, Champions League final meant, unfortunately, you missed the opening warm up games. You've been involved with England for a long time. Do you feel like it makes a difference if you couldn't play? And, and do you feel as if a week is long enough to, to prep for the opener? I think that's just been football for the last four or five years for me. Um, I've always come back back early um, for pre-season to compete in the Community Shield or something. So, you know, generally speaking, I probably have two weeks off here and there every year. Um, I still feel fresh. I feel good. You know, this is what I love doing. Um, I love playing football few days at home is fantastic, brilliant, but then after it's like, where's the football getting me out there? So, you know, I can't complain, especially representing my country in a major tournament, you know, these are the things that you want to you want to be competing in and you dream as a kid. I know you've probably parked the Champions League final to, to set your head for, for the Euros, but obviously your manager was questioned so much about his tactics in, in the final. Is it just one of those things, sometimes it just doesn't go according to plan? I think it's just the game of football. You, you know, tactically try and work out something and I don't know, I, I think it's very harsh too. I think I hear a lot about his tactics and this, that and the other, but, you know, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, you know, Pep gets it right, but no one com complains about the tactics then. It's like, okay, Manchester City went and scored five against X, Y and Z and no one's complaining about the tactics then, but he felt that that was the best team and, you know, we as lads fully back him on that and, Sometimes it's down to the 11 players on the pitch to do a little bit more, uh, which I thought that each and every one of us could have done. And I don't think I'd be 
out of line by saying that. You talk about the 11 players on the pitch, obviously leading up into a major tournament and the opening game against Croatia. There's plenty of speculation of who's going to be the starting 11 at Wembley on Sunday. I'm not expecting you to tell us, obviously, who's who's starting, but have you trained today with the starting 11? No, no. Even if I did, as you just said before, I couldn't tell you. But we haven't. Um, seriously, I haven't. It's just been you know, a few set plays, making sure that we've put the final places or the finishing touches in into place um, and making sure that we're all switched on. We all know what we're doing. We all know our roles and responsibilities on, on set plays because I think we proved that in the last World Cup. They're massive in, in big tournaments. Getting a few set playing goals and you know defending a few you know very very well it can put you in good stead to you know last last in the tournament. You mentioned defence there as well. We we heard that you practiced a back three with Luke Shaw on the left in training. Have you been trialling different formations as well as practicing set pieces? I can remember Luke Shaw being in a back three in training, so um, might have been when I wasn't here. But um, obviously there's there's personnel in the team that can play in different positions. I think. Both me and Reese have played as a right-sided centre-half. Um, as you just said there, Luke has done that for Manchester United. Uh, but everyone else is quite capable of playing in you know, a number of positions. Look at Trips, he's played right and left back. So it's a good problem uh, for Gareth to have, uh, to pick a, a starting eleven. I think each and every one of us are here by merit. We've all got here by good performances, not in the period of a week or two weeks. It's been a season long of good performances for everyone in the team. And Rightly so, they're, they're here on merit. Um, so it's good for English football. It's good for the team, and hopefully everyone can come into play in some sort, some stage of this tournament to get us, you know, to that final what we all want. That's why you've picked loads of versatile players. I would expect because you're all going to be involved at, at some point. I didn't. I don't know if you know, but Jose Mourinho is working with us yeah. for the Euros, and he was asked to to select his starting eleven for Croatia. He's predicted a back four. Okay. So much debate going on in the media. I'm not sure how much of it you've been listening to. Um, you're starting on the right, oh, thank as you. far as he's concerned. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Henderson's in goal. Stones and Mings centre packs. Chilwell on the left. Phillips and Rice holding, Mount as the number 10, Kane up front, Grealish on the left, Foden on the right. In the manner it's designed, mm. which is Jose just picking the team himself, what, what do you make of that? Well, I think he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He's been a manager for long enough and uh, <laughs> putting me at right back on, uh, he's in my good book, so thank you, Jose, for that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, the attacking talent available now is absolutely amazing, and you must have heard how excited everyone is about the possibility of Foden, Grealish and Mount starting together in particular. Is that something you all talk about as players? I think we, we can't really, because it's disrespectful on the other players that are, are here and also in good form. Um, the three that you named, I mean, it's exciting times in here for English football to have them in a squad and, you know, to fit them all in a squad and playing all well, you know, will we'll stand a really good chance of doing something special. But I think it's not about three players, it's not about four players, it's not about the starting eleven. You know, it's about a team. It's about a team and that's why, you know, Gareth's picked the personnel that he's, he's picked and hopefully, you know, as I've been with Manchester City, you know, in any stage of this tournament, any time of this tournament, it could be an injury, it could be sending off, it could be, you know, a tactical substitution where you could actually come and be an hero from coming off the bench. So it's all about staying positive, making sure who whoever the eleven it's going to be picked, you're going to be disappointed, it's natural, it's natural, but make sure that you get behind them, make sure you get behind everyone and make sure that we're a team, you know, it's not the 11 and then all of a sudden, if I get my chance I can maybe go and do something, no, we're, we're a team in this and we want to stay here until, you know, until the final. Yeah, that's absolutely crucial, isn't it? How are you all feeling about the Croatian match? I know England notoriously start tournaments a bit, a bit slowly, yeah. how confident are you all? No, we're confident. I think we have to be with the players that we've got. We have to be confident, um, as you just said before. You know, England don't normally start um, tournaments too great, but as I just said, you know, a couple of minutes ago, England don't normally get to a semi-final, which we did. So hopefully, we can just keep knocking down the barriers that are in front of us, the, the cliches that are surrounded um, around England, and you know, just spin a positive light on it because I think. The World Cup made it so much easier for us, as I just said before, with everyone just being so positive. You know, okay, if we lose or we're having bad moments in the game, it's natural, it's a game of football. 
it's on the international stage. But you know, let's not um, let's not get down. Let's keep going and keep fighting until you know until it's mathematically done or you, you can't go any further. Scotland have announced that they're going to be taking the knee in solidarity yeah. with you next Friday. What's your reaction to that? No, it's it's, it's a hard it's a hard subject to being you know raised religion. It's tough. It's a tough one to think. So for me, it's kind of like I said my piece now um, the other day. I just really want to just concentrate now on the tournament. Let's put, uh, let the football do our talking and see where that gets us. Italy Turkey tonight. Are you going to be watching it all together? What are your plans? Well, we've got a little bit of downtime now, so. Um, some will be sleeping. I mean, I think B went to sleep at five o'clock last night. I was thinking, how are you going to sleep at night? But some people are different. They have their own routines. Um, I think there's an area set up where we can all go and watch it and you know be together. So I'm sure a lot will turn up. But it's just as long as they're prepared and you know some of them might not watch football. As long as they're all prepared for Sunday, I don't care what you do. What are you going to do though? I will be watching it. I will, the old folks will be watching it. <laughs> <laughs> are you buzzing for the start for the first kickoff? Yeah. I, I, um, so it's, it's football. I just want to see a good game, a cup of tea in my hand, and I'll enjoy the game. Brilliant. Two more quick questions. You talked about Darren Bent being your favourite presenter on yeah. Talk Sport. Um, firstly, tell me why. No, I played with him. I played with uh, Bentley, obviously, at England and at Villa when he signed from Sunderland. So we've shared some good moments, some good memories. Um, and he helped me out massively when I first joined at England to you know, settle into the squad. But also got to say Gabby as well you know he makes me laugh his laugh makes me laugh <laughs> so um, he's Every a good Saturday listen. it makes me yeah. laugh too he's a good listen to as well so I, I say it's a toss up between between them two. Oh, I love it I'll get him to fight it out um, if England win the Euros Darren yeah. did say he'd dye his hair blonde a la Phil Foden uh, Declan Rice said he'd have his first beer what will you do if England win the Euros well dye my hair blonde I ain't got much hair left so I can't do that so I can't start messing around with it I'm my first beer, I've already had a beer, so I'll be having a lot more than one beer if we win the Euros. Um, I don't know, I think I'd let you guys come up with something and I'm quite happy to do anything that you want if England win the Euros. Kyle Walker, that is dangerous, <laughs> dangerous territory. Bearing in mind you listen to talk sport often, you yeah. set yourself right up there. Yeah. You dyed your hair in 2018, didn't you? Was it Deli yeah. Ali trying to like expose it from training? It was terrible, it was terrible. It was a, um, a recipe for disaster, me messing with my own hair, but I tried and it didn't work and now I'm a one all over. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of Phil's? Um, Phil's Phil, I, I said it uh, in a podcast actually the other day, but it just shows his confidence. Um, I think that's what he shows on the pitch. As long as he's played as he's played this season, he can dye his hair yellow, grey, pink, purple. Just put me a few goals in the back of the net, mate, and you can do what you want. <laughs>